On today's Maker Mashup, the silence of the fans. So if you're like me, you have a 3D printer and most of the time it's either running or it's sitting idle when you're working in your shop. Now, if the printer's idle, the fan on it to me is very annoying. You've got the fan on the power supply, you've got the uh, hot end fan that runs all the time, and then you have the part cooling fan when things are printing. All of these fans, even if you get silent fans like a Noctua, where they're very, very quiet, still produce a lot of noise in the shop, especially when you have more than one 3D printer. So in today's video, we're gonna be working on silencing all the fans on our 3D printer. And yes, that includes the power supply fan. Now, some of these come and they always seem to be marked on there that the fan won't kick on unless the power supply warms up. Most of them that you buy on Amazon don't have that feature enabled. Now, there are videos out there on the internet that show you how to modify specific brands of power supplies, but I'm gonna show you a trick today that you can go ahead and modify your power supply without having any other knowledge about the manufacturer, and only thing we're gonna be modifying is the fan itself. So we're gonna be working on that today. We're also gonna go ahead and modify our 3D printer. We're gonna make a little breakout board, and that's gonna allow us to have either 24 volt fans or 12 volt fans in our system. And we're gonna go ahead and make that breakout board something that we can plug multiple fans into. But the great thing is these fans are only gonna kick on once your printer starts heating up. Now, in order to accomplish all this, we're gonna have to do a few things to the firmware. And the modifications of the firmware are pretty straightforward and easy, but you should be familiar with working with the firmware and recompiling it because it's gonna be necessary if your firmware already doesn't have this feature enabled. And good news, X301 owners, if you're using our firmware, it's already in there and all you'll have to do is wire up the breakout board. Now I do wanna take a second and say, when we come to modifying your power supply, this portion here really is a safety thing. So if you're not familiar with electronics and you don't feel comfortable opening this power supply up, simply don't do it. It's not worth the risk of getting electrically shocked. This is definitely a more advanced function, and even if this power supply fan is still running, your printer will be quieter with the other changes that I'm gonna show you today. So with all that said, let's get to work. So we're gonna start here by going ahead and soldering on some header pins onto our project board. Now what we're gonna use these header pins for is so that way we can go ahead and also mount that buck converter you see in the picture here onto this project board. Now, since my power supply is a 24 volt supply, if I want to use something like a Noctua fan, I need to kick that down to 12 volts because Noctua doesn't sell a 24 volt fan that will fit on the hot end of my printer. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and set it up so we can have two JST connectors, but you could have more than two. And what we'll do is we'll have two of them running at 24 volts, and then we can have two of them after the buck converter, which can be running at 12 volts. Now, if you wanna use a five volt fan, you could use that instead and also use your buck converter and take it down to five volts. So it's really up to you how you wanna use the buck converter with your 3D printer. Now you can see I've got the buck converter attached and I'm just soldering it to these header pins. Now the reason why I chose the header pins is it raises it slightly off this project board and I'm able to use one of these buck converter modules and I've got links for all of this down in the description. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set up the JST connectors. I'm gonna put two on the left side of the board and this is gonna be our 24 volt side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put two on the right side and that's gonna be our 12 volt side. Now you can see here, I used a little bit of Kapton tape to hold those JSTs in place and I'm just gonna solder them to the back of the project board. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and attach our power leads. So this is just a length of wire, uh, one red, one black. And then what I'm going to do here is solder these onto the project board. And these are going to be on the inside of the buck converter, which is going to be our 24 volt side. Now this is the side that we're also going to connect to the main board. Uh, and then that it will go ahead and supply the power to this project board and our fans that we want to turn on only when the printer is running. The wiring on the rest of this is really straightforward. We're just going to use some jumper wires and we're going to run the positive end of the 24 volt line down to the JST connectors and one side of them will be the positive and one side will be the negative. The other side works exactly the same way. We're simply going to take our jumper lead and we're going to go ahead and take one side from the positive and to the negative and hook it up to these JST connectors. We'll wrap everything up by creating some solder bridges between the JST connectors and that will make everything all connected. Once we're done soldering everything together, we're going to grab our multimeter. We're going to put that in continuity mode and then what we're going to do is just check all of our solder connections to make sure that we have uh, good continuity between them and that we didn't solder anything that we didn't want to. Finally, we're going to take the ends of our lead wires and we're just going to go ahead and put some ferro connectors on the ends of this that will hook to our main board. Now we need to mount our project board and there's a 3D print included in the description and all we're going to do here is mark on our enclosure where we're going to put this board and then what we'll do is we'll drill some holes and attach it to the main electronics enclosure. Finally, what we're going to do is take our project board and this just pops into the 3D printed part and it keeps it raised up so it won't short on those screws either. Okay, so this part is the secret sauce. What we're going to do is we're going to take our project board leads and we're going to connect this to the second open hot end that I've got here on my main board. Now I'm only using one hot end port for my 3D printer. So in this case, I'm going to use the second one to turn the fans on and apply power to them only when the printer is heating up and it's over 50 Celsius. Now this process doesn't just work for this 3D printer. Any 3D printer that has a second open hot end, you can go ahead and do this with. Okay, so now we've opened up Marlin and we're in the configuration advanced, which is the other place where the secret sauce is. Now what you're gonna see here is this E-Auto fan and it's part of the extruder cooling fan section of Marlin. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is replace fan one underscore pin if you're not using uh, the x 3 one firmware, you want to set this to whatever it is on your particular main board. Now you can go ahead and look at the schematic for your main board. So if you're using a different one, this still applies. You can use it for an SKR 14, 13, a ramp board, anything that has that second extruder pin. You just need to find out what that pin number is. And you can find that generally in the pins.h for your particular motherboard. So once you've got this set, the only other option that you might want to consider changing is the extruder auto fan temperature. Now this defaults to 50 Celsius and I suggest going with the defaults, but you can change that as well. Either way, once you have this in there and recompile the firmware, you'll be all set to go ahead and have your fans automatically kick on when you get to 50 Celsius. So they'll be off when your hot end temperature drops below 50 Celsius. So it even allows your printer to cool down safely and your hot end to cool down safely before going on. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so I've plugged in my case fan and I've also gone ahead here and we're plugging in our extruder fan. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is heat everything up and you'll see here at 50 Celsius, the fan kicks on. And there we go. So let's go ahead and move on now to the final piece, which is the power supply fan.
Okay, so we have the power supply open, and what we're going to be using is a normally open switch. Now, this is a thermal switch, so when it gets to 40C, we're going to put this inside the coil here, so that way it will sense the coil heating up inside the power supply. And when it gets to 40 Celsius, then what we'll do is it will go ahead and turn on the fan. So our first step here is going to be to use some of this thermal paste. And this is thermal silicone paste, and it will not only hold this in place, but what it will also do is thermally conduct the temperature or the heat that comes out of this coil, and it will put it to the switch. And then once the switch identifies the 40C, it will go ahead and trigger. So what we're gonna do here is just add a little bit of the paste on the inside of the coil, and then we're gonna go ahead and put some on the switch itself, and then we're gonna let this sit overnight. Now that we let this sit overnight, what we're gonna do is introduce the switch into the fan wiring only. Now, in order for us to do that, what we're going to do here is simply cut the wires on the positive wire on our fan, and then we're going to go ahead and put this switch in between it. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and strip these wires, and then we're going to get some shrink tubing, and then we're going to solder them to the switch itself. So we're going to put the switch basically in between the positive wire running to our fan. So you can see the only thing we're modifying in this power supply is the fan itself. So you have no need to touch any of the big capacitors or other electronics in here, and it's pretty safe to touch that coil. So if you're careful in here, this is a pretty easy project to take on. But of course, if you feel uncomfortable in any way or you're not familiar with this sort of electronics, please don't attempt this part of the project. Finally, we'll wrap everything up here by going ahead and using our heat gun to shrink our shrink tubing. And then we're just going to go ahead and reassemble the power supply and we'll be ready to go. So you'll just hook this back up and now our power supply will not kick on until the inside temperature of that coil reaches 40 Celsius. Now, if you feel like 40 Celsius is too hot, they also sell these in 35 and any number of different temperatures. So you can experiment with which one you feel is best for your particular power supply usage. Okay, so we made all the modifications. We replaced the power supply. And guess what? Our 3D printer doesn't make a sound when it's idle now. It won't go ahead and kick that fan on until we get about 50 Celsius of the hot end. And then once that gets to that temperature, those fans that kick in on the printer. So the shop now is quiet whenever the printers aren't running. So if I'm down here working on something else, I don't have the issue of those fans constantly running when the 3D printers are just sitting idle. So if you need help with this project or any other project you're working on, please feel free to check out our channel Discord. And the link for it's down in the description below. And I also wanna give a quick shout out to Buddy and Dano, our brand new MVPs in our Discord. So that's going to be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe and click that bell so you get notifications so you don't miss one of our upcoming episodes. So with that, I'm going to say thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.